Welcome to Salesforce's five must-haves for the ultimate sales kickoff call. We invite you to ask questions throughout the program using the Ask a Question module in the dashboard. Please welcome CEO and co-founder of Fast Forward Group, Lisa McCarthy. Hi, I'm Lisa McCarthy, and I'm excited to be your host today. Before we dive into this exciting conversation for you to get actionable insights and ideas to create a high impact SKO, I just wanna mention a few housekeeping items. Please share today's message on social media by using hashtag ultimate sales kickoff. And this is gonna be more than a webinar. You may have noticed the dashboard at the bottom of the page. Feel free to check out some really valuable resources that we're gonna put in there the event survey, and there's a Q&A button to send in your questions. And last but not least, please take the attendee survey, which will pop up right after the event. Okay, so we are now gonna jump in and we are going to start by introducing our fabulous uh, panelists who are gonna share all of their brain power with you. Let's start with Jenna. Hi, Lisa. Hi, hi everyone on the line. My name is Jenna Dunkel. I am a manager on the field enablement team at Salesforce. Uh, specifically, I support our mid-market AEs, but I am part of a larger team um, in our commercial uh, sales reps who is made up of about 1,400 AEs, account executives, or leaders in North America. It's great to be here, Lisa. Thank you. Okay, Megan, over to you. Hello, everyone. My name is Megan Allen. I'm from from Zscaler. As a, I work at there as a global buyer and sales enablement manager on the buyer enablement team, uh, but part of a larger team, as Jenna said, of about 33 people on our sales strategy enablement team that supports our global sales organization of about 900 people, which includes our AEs, our sales engineers, our channel, our sales development team, customer success, and sales leadership. Okay, so these are very large organizations and we know that our audience has all size organizations. And so we're gonna share best practices to help everybody viewing. All right, so Jenna, Salesforce has created a guide to the ultimate sales kickoff that has a lot of meaningful guidance. I had a chance to read it and we're gonna share it with everybody that's participating in the resources. Um, I'd love for you to bring it to life. I know there are must-haves that that you've talked about, and and why don't we start off with engaging breakouts? I know that's one of the things you said that's so important, particularly in today's virtual world. Yeah, and I I think it's the biggest one in in today's virtual world, and I think when you get down to like why do those really matter, that's where the light bulb moments typically happen, and the reason is because the breakout sessions allows for more in engagement, which is why we're saying they're engaging, um, interaction across peers. Uh, they're typically smaller in size and very relevant to the learner. Um, so I think how you really wanna think about executing this is it is going to vary on your, your organizational size, but if, for example, a smaller breakout session, you could have uh, account executives and leaders perhaps pre-register, cap it at, call it, 30 people for the general session, but then to allow for engagement, think about it in like round table sections. So then you would use a function like a Zoom breakout room and really only have about five or six people in each of those sessions. And again, that's where they start having conversations and start really interacting with one another. And I think that's where most of the learning honestly happens. Yeah, got it. Okay, that's helpful. All right, and the other thing, the next thing you talk about in the in the guide is panels, the importance of panels and outside resources. Tell me more about that. Yeah, I think specifically customers panels. If you can bring in uh, two or three of your customers, a variety of size, so don't just think about the larger enterprise, but also the SMB customers and have them speak to your organization, 
those sessions are always, I never, it's never quiet in, in those. People are always wanting to raise their hand and, and hear from their customers. This really allows um, us and as a sales organization to hear what's going well, what else can we fix? But really, what is on our customers' minds? Like, what are we missing that we might not get in our regular day-to-day -day conversations? Yeah, got it. Okay, and I know, um, Megan, you're going to talk about your your recent uh, SKO in a little while. Were Was panels one of the things that you included in your session? Yeah, definitely. I think highlighting how your company is making an impact out in the field um, is, is a great way to keep your, your sales organization energized and remind them why they're doing what they're doing on a daily basis, especially in times with, you know, with what we're going through with COVID right now and everyone being at home. I think having panels and allowing people to hear those customer stories is going to really help energize your, your sales force. Yeah, got it. Okay. All right. So Jenna, the next thing you talk about is having an inspirational keynote. And um, I know from doing keynotes myself that typically we get the audience in, involved. So tell me about your, your past, like who's been really impactful. And then, you know, do you have anyone in mind for the upcoming SKO that you're planning? So for the upcoming, it's still being planned. And also, I don't even know if I could tell, because normally you like to keep the, the anticipation and a little bit of a surprise. But in the past, uh, I've been part of an org organizations that have brought in Julie Rice. She's the co-founder of SoulCycle. Uh, we've heard from W. Mitchell. He's a gentleman who wrote a book. It's not uh, what happens to you. It's what you do about it. He was in an unfortunate a motorcycle accident and um, really came to speak to the organization about how he he made a comeback from it and and kind of carried on with his life and, and really thrived in it. We've also had Bill Walton, um, an NBA uh, basketball player. So really, you know, depending on your size and if you've got the ability to bring in a really cool name, I think the, the best part is like the story that they tell. Normally, I'm the person in the audience who have, has to have like tissues on hand because uh, the story can really move your your sales organization and just get them really motivated or feeling really empowered for the year ahead. Yeah, got it. And and Megan, anything you want to share about that, whether it's from your your current or past company, how you've used inspirational keynotes in the sales kickoff? Yeah. Um, so you know, one thing that I'm going to highlight when talking about some about our SCO that we recently had is, is really choosing a theme. Um, and I think tying that theme in with your keynote is, is really special mm. and really just helps tie everything together really beautifully. Um, we, we did an Olympic theme um, at our recent SCO and we had Apollo Ono speak to, to our organization and, and his story was so captivating and just so energizing for the field. I was, you know, we ran three different scopes for our global organization. And I listened to him every single time. It was really, really awesome. Beautiful. Love that. Okay. Um, all right. The next thing you talk about, Jenna, is quality focused events. And that's obviously, you know, been, been such a focus given what's been happening in, in our country and, and our world this year. So tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, equality is one of Salesforce's core values. So I feel really fortunate to work for a company that really lives and breathes those values. Um, so we have all these employee equality groups. And I think a SCO is a perfect way to um, highlight them, include them, uh, have them interact with the sales uh, group. So specifically, a good example could be we have a Women in Leadership Network can we have a women's networking panel as part of our SCO? Um, now more than ever, you know, there needs to be a quality group. So I also think that if you're a smaller organization or an organization that just hasn't put um, specific attention to having equality groups, get those launched. It's 2021 um, and SCO is a perfect way to uh, get those launched for your new year ahead. Got it. Great. Anything you want to add about that, Megan, in your company, no. whether it has to do with the sales no, kickoff no, I, or not? 
Yeah, I agree with Jenna a hundred percent here. You know, it's 2021. It's time. It's time to focus on on different groups throughout your organization and and highlighting them at a halftime event or SCO event or any event that you're hosting virtually or in person is is the perfect time to to showcase what those different networking groups or um, groups are doing throughout the organization. Uh, we have a women in tech uh, group here at Zscaler uh, that is fastly growing and, you know, it's just such a great support system being a part of that. Um, and so highlighting that throughout any sort of event that you're doing as a whole organization, I think really brings to light what they're focusing on and the conversations that they're having and just all around, you know, great networking for, for the, everybody at the organization. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So the next thing you talk about in your guide is the importance of leadership meetings. Tell me, what do you mean by that, especially in, in today's virtual world? Yeah, I think it's really critical to not forget about that segment of the sales audience at SCOs. You know, right. of course you focus on the AEs, but the first line, second line leaders, they have a very different job. And especially if this is their first fiscal year um, with the organization, maybe there's something just uh, policy wise or forecasting that they need to be updated on, but really that coaching aspect. So I think having a specific breakout session um, tailored to that audience is really, really critical. Otherwise you're doing that, you know, group of leaders a little bit of a disservice if you don't have content really specific for them as well. Got it. Okay, so so all of what we just shared is um, focused on sales. And I know whenever you're planning a sales kickoff, you want to include some fun. You want to include purpose, well-being, and um, it's harder in a virtual world. So, so tell me how you're thinking about that, Jenna. Yeah, I think um, it's, it's funny. One of our breakout sessions kind of pillars as we are planning for it is focused on personal development and a subtext is that wellness factor. So I think, you know, if it's a choose your own adventure where AEs during these breakout sessions can pick, hey, Maybe I want to learn about our new sales methodology, but then I want to balance it out with some well wellness. You could even um, have a session running for breathing tactics. Um, I did a session on ergonomics, like sitting at my desk because we're now at home. Um, you could bring in someone or I'm have someone who say that. <laughs> right, exactly. I know I need to work on my posture too. Um, but so something as simple as that, there's probably someone in your organization who practices yoga. Maybe they lead it at a, a local studio typically. So would they be willing to run a session as a breakout that just helps people with simple yoga moves to keep them, you know, loose and limber throughout the day? I think that's a really like great way to not only break up the day during SCO, but something that they can use as they have to continue to work from home for the you know foreseeable future. Yes, exactly. Okay. And how about you, Megan, outside of core sales enablement, share <laughs> yeah, some of the things you've been recent SCO. Yeah. So I think networking opportunities outside of all the enablement that you're going to be pushing at a, a kickoff are, are important. So I would encourage everyone to really just take the time to think about how employees can act, re interact with one another, um, since this is such a huge portion of what you have in an in-person SCO. So challenge your team when you're planning your SCO to, to think, how can we incorporate that into a completely virtual event? So at our in-person in SCO, we always have a philanthropy event and live entertainment. So why not do these things virtually? So we had David Mead, the mentalist from for our entertainment, um, which to my you know complete surprise was just like being in person. It was it was fun that my you know family could watch it with me, and and he was very entertaining, and it was a lot of fun to to experience that with everybody uh, virtually. And then for our philanthropy, we made uh, shoe patterns for a nonprofit called Soul, Soul Hope who makes shoes for kids in Uganda. So we sent out SCO packages pre-SCO to all of our employees with some goodies in them, but included in that package was the patterns to cut out uh, the shoe patterns. So then we had a dedicated time for our philanthropy event and we put random people into breakout rooms uh, to cut the patterns out of old pairs of jeans that they had at their houses. Um, so our attendees loved this event, uh, was definitely highly rated. It gave them the opportunity to work with people that they normally probably wouldn't 
go up to and talk to at an in-person event. Uh, it was a great time for their families to get involved too. So we received tons of pictures of families cutting out the patterns together with their spouses and children. Um, and then in that SCO package that we sent, we also included a pre-labeled envelope for them to just send it back to us so we could send it to Soul Hope after. And that was one of the most highly rated uh, events that we had at our SCO. Wow. Okay. Sounds like a good idea for you, Jenna. Something to get the whole family involved. I actually haven't I know, heard that from any of our clients. I know. And Megan, I was actually just thinking, uh, like the shoes kind of even go with your uh, Olympic theme. So I think that's awesome. Um, yeah. We were similarly planning um, the Thursday morning of our SCO calendar. We'll be including some BTO, so volunteer. Uh, every every year, each Salesforce employee gets 56 uh, paid volunteer hours, which is just awesome. But again, what a perfect way, Megan. I love hearing that that you bake it in at the start of your new fiscal, and, and we're planning on doing the same. Um, some easy ways of doing that remote, I think that, that we've also used in the past at Salesforce, is writing cards to either um, senior homes or children in hospitals. And again, these things can be pre-packaged or sent out, or you could tell your employees like, hey, go ahead and expense um, some paper and scissors and stickers, uh, and they can craft their own cards and and buy some stamps and then have them set a specific address to send them to. There's a ton of different ways to give back even in this virtual world. And I think that's also a really good activity to do with um, kids in case you're also uh, managing the, the role of homeschooling as well. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we have a lot of that going on right now uh, across the country and, uh, and across the world. Okay, um, now uh, you had eight must-haves, and I think I covered five or six of them, Jenna. So is there anything else you want to share from your amazing, thoughtful guide before I ask Megan about her recent conference? So not entirely, but the, the couple that we didn't touch on specifically of the eight bullet yeah. points were the, the make it fun. And then I think there was also one about networking. The reason mm. I didn't call that out because I could only, you know, pick a couple favorites is I think those are like no brainers that should be baked in throughout. So, you know, at every step of the way to Megan's point, if there's a theme around Olympic, how do we take this breakout session and make it fun or gamify it or include that theme in it? I think, you know, really any uh, any point that you can make it fun, whether by having icebreakers, fun little uh, snippet videos in between um, Zoom sessions, I think that makes a really big difference in keeping the energy up. Yes, let's get some bloopers going. Talent in the Salesforce. <laughs> I've seen a lot of good talent shows live, but I could I could envision that being pre-recorded. Okay, so so Megan, you actually have your SKO behind you, so it'd be mm -hmm. great to share with our audience. You know, what did you do? What did you learn? So that they can take your ideas and apply it to their <laughs> own. Yeah, I love that. I, yeah, so SCO is behind us, but it, the time does not stop and it goes by quicker. We're already planning our halftime event uh, for February. So SCO is behind us, but on to the next one. So uh, a couple of key things uh, that we haven't covered yet that really come to mind when we talk about effectiveness. First and foremost is choosing a great platform when you're when you're planning a virtual event to host your event and and a great production crew to help pull all of that content together um so we went with eventify i wanted to share that just because I, I know everyone's going to ask uh we went with eventify for the platform and then we went with cg creative for the vendor to assist with pulling all of our content together and assembling everything in the platform itself um, and we're currently looking at socio for our mid-year virtual event like i just said that we're planning now um, and for lots of social interactions and gamification, just a little bit different than uh, what we used at, at um, SCO. Um, second, like I said, choosing a theme. Uh, 
is more important than ever when planning a virtual SCO and making sure that you carry that throughout the event, I think will really help with the engagement and keeping things interesting and energizing. So we chose to go with an Olympic theme and hosted our SCO games, pushing people to go beyond limits. So our virtual environment looks sim similar to an Olympic village. We had the keynote complex to host our pre-recorded general sessions, the village to host our philanthropy event and entertainment, as well as our breakout sessions, the expo center is where people went for our virtual booths. And then our e-learning center is where our, our attendees could go to complete the e-modules throughout the event on their own time. So some additional things that we did to keep that theme going was having the SCO Games hosts, uh, as you would see in the Olympics. And I was lucky enough to be one of those hosts so I can now check hosting an Olympic Games off of my <laughs> bucket list. And one of my favorite touches was putting together the Parade of Geo segment where we were able to highlight each team's accomplishment, accomplishments throughout the year uh, and really highlight that like you would see at an Olympic Games with all of the, the, the countries coming into the arena. So it was so fun. And we also, like I said earlier, had Apollo Ono as our keynote speaker, which was just simply so amazing and engaging. Um, and I say all this to say that choosing your theme is a perfect time to get creative um, and really push the envelope. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, it sounds like uh, it, it. It sounds like it was a really high impact event, and I'm just curious: you're going to continue the theme through your through your mid year event, or it's like now what? <laughs> it was back to the drawing board. So we're going to pick a new theme uh, for our halftime. We haven't announced it yet to our sales organization. Like Jenna said, I'll, I would get in trouble if I gave any ideas of what we're. <laughs> planning for halftime, but uh, we went back to the drawing board to pick out a new theme uh, going into our halftime event. Got it. So you actually do these events twice a year. Would you have done two live events? I'm just curious. Yeah, we would. So we do our end of the year sales kick, or our well, beginning of new fiscal year, end of year sales kickoff. And then halfway through the year, we would do two different live events. Instead of bringing the whole globe together in one location, we would do two separate halftime events, one in America's and one for EMEA and APAC. Um, so we would just host two different ones at about halfway through the year. Got it. Okay. So you're already yeah. planning that one. Um, and yes. Jenna, I know that, uh, well, congratulations on having it behind you. Now you're a virtual SKO uh, pro, and I'm sure you've learned a lot. And um, Jenna, tell me about yours. I know you can't reveal any secrets, but uh, you're probably you know, you're, you're well into planning. So what could you share with our audience that would be valuable? Yeah, I will. And I think uh, Megan's little tagline should now say SCO Pro underneath her. <laughs> so, um, cause you're, you've got it down and I love, I love the Olympic theme. Um, we are definitely in the planning process. Um, as of now, just some kind of like logistics we are looking to host ours the second week of february this is two weeks after our, our fiscal year of february one um i think the exciting thing this year that's a big change is because we're in this virtual world we are positioning it as global so it will be our first ever global kickoff historically when we've done it in person it has been uh, region specific so north america would all uh, typically meet in a convention center, but this year will be a little bit different. And how we're thinking of structuring it is because we have to accommodate for all the time zones, we will have about two hours of content every day from Monday the 15th through Thursday the 18th that will be uh, composed of keynote speakers, whether it's uh, senior leaders or that inspirational uh, external keynote speaker, as well as then an additional hour of those choose your own adventure breakout sessions. And I think really like when I'm looking at our plan and again, the details are still to come, I think this is gonna work out really well because one, again, we can co accommodate for a larger global and that's bringing together uh, people that typically we haven't been able to do so, even if it is in a virtual world. Um, but then two, also having it more in that like chunks of time also gives the adult learner a little bit of that downtime then from any screen fatigue or if they need to help, you know, again, do wear the multiple hats at home. It's going to allow for some flexibility in that regard. Um, and, and we're really excited about how it's shaping up so far. 
Yeah, I've got it. I have like a really basic question. I know that when I go to live offsites, there's 20 minute bio breaks after every 90 to 120 minutes. Like, what are we doing in that? What are you guys doing in the virtual world? Is it the same? It, Megan, I'll start right. with you. You can't, just, you can't just go on a on this stage and be like, "We're gonna be back in ten minutes." So, uh, you know, come back in into the room, go out and get your snack break. Um, you know, I talked a little bit about how we sent those prepackages. We, we in those packages we had like snacks and stuff in there for them to enjoy since they couldn't do that. Uh, you know, um, that was sort of a missing piece from the in person part. Uh, but we did we we built in some breaks and we built in time for people to just spend time in the platform itself. So jumping around to the expo center and if they wanted to take an e module uh, that they didn't complete in their pre work during the the course of the week, they they had time to do that there or just going into the virtual booths. Um, so we actually had people sitting in the virtual booths and we really gamified those those uh, booths for people to attend. And it really here again was just another great networking opportunity um, and wasn't a time that they had to be 100% focused like they would in a breakout session. Um, and it was just a good fun time for them to hop around the platform since it truly was like being in a game. <laughs> yeah, got it, I love that. And, and remind me, did you say this already, how many hours per day they actually participated in your recent one? Yeah, so it was probably about I think about four or five hours a day um, of being, whether it was in general sessions, um, which mm -hmm. I, I didn't hit on earlier, but our general sessions were one of the biggest elements that really helped us with engagement at our SCO. We were able to pre-record mainstay sessions, which allowed us to produce a really highly engaging almost TV show basically. So within with animations on screen and visual rep representation in a way that you just don't normally get to do live. So this really kept everyone engaged and excited to see what the following sessions would be like within the platform. And then we also had a live chat running during the main stage session. So everyone was watching them live together. So it was fun to feel like we were all together, but just in a different type of way. Um, and, and that was, so the, the days consisted of breakout sessions, time for them to just spend in the platform itself um, and sort of self-paced learning and then the breakout sessions. And then at, in the evening we had an award ceremony one night, the philanthropy event, and then the entertainment as well. Oh, great. I love all of those ideas. All right, um, Jenna, anything you want to share? Let's start to really contrast like all of, a lot of the things you just said, you know, are, are some of the benefits of, um, doing virtual and, and let's get at that. Like, I, I know there's been challenges that you could have never imagined, but what are some of the benefits and, and silver linings of doing a virtual sales kickoff? Yeah. Let's I, start. You know, I, oh, sorry. Yeah, I jumped the gun. I'm just super excited about the benefits. Um, so I mentioned that again, this is our first time that we're able to make this global, which is really exciting, but I think at the nuts and bolts of it also is just the efficient use of time and resources. As silly as that sounds, I think, honestly, sales leaders every year kind of have this internal mental battle around like, okay, is it worth having our, our AEs out of the field for a full, full week when you consider the travel involved and if they have to fly in the night before and, and get set up in a hotel room or all those additional logistics that just aren't the case. So I think really like virtual SCOs is eliminating that. So you can be really, really um, specific and, and useful with the time that you do have. And it's also going to allow more flexibility with the timing of the sessions because people are not stuck in a convention center and being like, all right, what do I do for the next hour? Versus if we say, hey, you've got an hour back now, here's your chance to, again, do some of those self-paced learning courses, take a walk with your dog, start working on the VTO event by writing cards to, you know, elders in, in senior homes. Um, it, it just, I think, is a really, like, more effective use of time. So I think there are a lot of, like, good benefits, but that's probably the biggest one that sticks out to me. Okay. How about you, Megan? Silver yeah, lining. I yeah, silver linings. It's actually funny. I think when you're planning a virtual SCO, you know, it's it's a you're going into the unknown. And so I think going in, we probably would have thought, 
that the list of benefits wouldn't be as long as it actually is uh, post SCO. Um, and so our, our team, I think, is just really taking that in and already incorporating all those benefits into our halftime event. But to name a few, I think, like Jenna said, there's no space constraints. You aren't working with square footage uh, like you would for an in-person event. So there's no limits with the number of breakouts. So with Jenna's point, it's allowing your attendees to make the absolute most of their time and you're able to personalize their learning track to their role specifically. I, you know, a lot of times in in-person events, you sort of have to broaden the horizons of what the breakout session is going to be and put everybody from all the different roles into the same breakout room because you don't have the space. Whereas for a vir virtual event, you can have multiple breakout rooms and put people in similar roles and have those breakout sessions really pertain to, to what's going to be most effective to them versus having a broader message there. So I think that that's uh, a, a big silver lining and then no jet lag. So you don't have attendees taking a full day to travel. <laughs> they are able to be refreshed and ready to go from the start of the week. And gamification and the creative uh, with virtual, you can really maximize both of these items and be able to pre-record, which I think really helps the event just run smoothly overall. Beautiful. Okay, and I'm curious, I, I know we don't have a crystal ball about the future, but given what you've learned, COVID will end and, and we all will go back to work. If you were to fast forward to 2022, what... What do you think your sales kickoff and or, you know, and or mid-year conference will look like? How might it change given what you're learning and experiencing? Let's start with you, Jenna. Yeah, I, I think it's going to end up being a little bit of a hybrid because again, like to Megan's point, I'm, I haven't even planned or we haven't executed on our SCO yet. So I'm thinking of the benefits ahead of time. And she's telling me that there's going to be more to realize. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, <laughs> but the one thing of where I'm like, Ooh, I really wish we could still do this in person is teams do, especially when you're dealing with very large sales organizations, they love mm. getting together. So to, to Megan's point, you know, typically there are social events, maybe there was like a concert of some sort or some after hours kind of networking. That's really where I think we can try our best to replicate in a virtual world, but that in person when we can hug again, you know, like mask free, maybe at some point, people are still going to crave that like in person connection. So where I think the hybrid comes into play is, hey, what could be done globally or like in these like two hour chunks that to Megan's point, maybe we pre-record, maybe that's like at home or in office like exposure, but then at a regional level, how can we use our, our resources and dollars effectively to still recreate that network, that fun and have a little bit of an in-person component. So it's really finding that balance. Yeah. Yeah, I think virtual has taught us a lot. Like, we'll, we'll, you may even end up having more events during the year because some of them can be virtual. Um, yeah. Now, Jenna, there were things that we talked about. We, we want to educate people on, on some of the things you've experienced, the difference between planning an SKO uh, live and, and virtual. And, and specifically, you talked about some of the tech issues and, and ways to keep people engaged. So I'd love for you to share about that for our listeners that haven't done this yet. Yeah, I think, you know, keeping engaged, this is going to be absolutely the biggest challenge and, and hurdle for any organization of any size in a virtual world. Um, I think specifically what companies can do is be really, really prescriptive in their expectations. So at a minimum, it sounds silly, but cameras on at all times, <laughs> like that is the number one, hey, keep people engaged. Um, if you've got a theme like Megan had with Olympics, can you add in an element of fun where maybe someone comes dressed as Olympian or wears a medal of some sort if they have it laying around their house, or maybe at a minimum, uh, people at least dress a little bit more professionally just to escalate uh, the the event and help it differentiate from any other meeting. Um, I think those are going to be like really, really critical things that can be done. And then the other big, the big, big thing is leverage technology. There are so many good tools to use to do fun engagements. Some specifically that I love using is 
Kahoot. So you can um, generate some quizzes. Uh, maybe it's a knowledge check after one of those sessions or breakout sessions. Um, so Kahoot.com, Menti.com, those are really good brain teasers uh, at the start of sessions. Um, using Icebreaker, ooh, that's really fun to bring people back into a room. It randomly pairs, you know, even if you've got a room of 100 people, it randomly pairs two people and gives them flip cards to talk through for 60 <laughs> seconds as an icebreaker and to meet new colleagues from across, you know, the country or maybe in, in different countries. Um, using Slack, Gchat throughout, like uh, Megan mentioned, just to you know, have people conversing the entire time without it, you know, being a distraction of people having to constantly raise their hand. Um, Jamboard, people can Zoom annotate. There are so many free resources that can be leveraged. And I cannot iterate enough. You have to keep them engaged and moving like every four minutes, even if it's just like, hey, raise your hand or type in this word. How are you feeling entering this session? Get, get the people uh, going. Otherwise, we could lose their engagement. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. That's one of the biggest things I've learned every four minutes. Otherwise, people are, are checking out. And uh, I also like calling on people. But that's something we do in a, <laughs> in, a, in a smaller forum. Okay, Megan, what would you like to add that would be uh, helpful to our audience? Yeah, I, I, I don't want to like beat a drum here. But I could not agree with Jenna more that engagement will be your biggest hurdle. I think we've all sort of experienced the Zoom fatigue uh, since COVID, you know, since the beginning of the year. So everyone's stuck at home. They have kids in the background. Their spouses are also working for, from home. If you're like me, your fur animal needs attention. So life is going on. So how do you conform to all of that while still educating them and keeping them energized throughout the event is just going to be a a question that you ask yourself constantly while planning. So we solved for this with, like I said, with the, for, with having high production quality, uh, we really invested in making sure that the general sessions and content throughout was of the highest quality to really keep people engaged. Um, our second biggest challenge was agenda. So you are trying to make it 100% absolutely clear where they need to be and what they need to be doing at all times is a little difficult. So you can't just go up on a stage, like I said, and give updates and direct people. So this is why it's important to have a very solid virtual platform to help guide people um, and herd cats in a different manner. Um, and then a few other challenges was working with so many different time zones. You know, being a global sales organization, we don't want to keep people in Australia up, you know, till 4 a.m. for an America session. So we, we truly were running three different SCOs throughout the week um, to, to conform yeah. with all of those different time zones, which was, was a big hurdle, but totally worth, you know, separating that out for the, 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 the greater good of the sales organization. And then lastly is troubleshooting issues. Technology is awesome. Uh, I, you know, it, and it, very important for virtual events, but it, it can work against you. So be prepared for, for troubleshooting issues. We set up a Slack channel uh, to help with all of the issues that people had day one. They worked themselves out by the end of the week, but it was really just that day one of getting everyone into the platform, um, no matter how yeah. many emails you send out prior to SCO to tell everyone what to expect. They don't know what to expect and you can't really prepare them for that virtual environment. So day one was a little tough, but you know, be prepared for those troubleshooting questions and how you're gonna attack those day one. And so that way everyone's all set for the rest of the week. Yes, thank you. Very good. Okay, so we are going to now shift into uh, two questions from our audience with our with our time left. Um, let's start with you, Jenna. In your opinion, is it good for every organization to change their platform in in every situation? For example, like this pandemic. And just just so I am understanding the question, to change the platform, you're saying to like a virtual uh, SCO? Am I interpreting? Yeah, exactly. That it sounds like the answer would be like, definitely yes. Like we, we can't skip the SCO, right? Yeah, I think it's such a, a critical touch point. And again, like people are looking for like a little pick me up and some motivation at now more than ever. So, you know, again, if you kind of like said like, well, this year we just won't do that. That is just one more thing of saying like, 
oh, the pandemic is yeah. really impacting. And I think that could be a little bit of like a, a mood kill for the organization. So even if you've got to do scrappy, even if you pull it off or not pull it off in a day, but only do a one day or maybe two yeah. half days, devote some time and some resources and, and have us go. Yes. Yeah, totally, totally get it. Okay, Megan, a specific question came in for you about the awards ceremony. They asked mm -hmm. if you sent these, if you notified these people in advance, if you sent the awards mm -hmm. in advance, or was it a big reveal? It was a big reveal. Uh, we didn't want to give anything away, even for leadership. Nobody knew um, up until it was announced, and we ran that session live. So we had... Uh, each, each geo had all their cameras on. It was so much fun. We saw people set up, you know, the, the t their TV in their living room and their family was watching the award ceremony with them. We had some live entertainment with our uh, ceremony as well. So they were like keeping everyone engaged throughout instead of just listing off the winners. Uh, we So it was sort of like an hour long session uh, for people to enjoy the entertainment. They sang some songs and it was like a cover band. And then we um, are, you know, we announced the winners uh, throughout the event. And it was just, it, we would put the camera, we would pull the, the camera up to be the only view that everyone saw when we were announcing a winner so we could see their reaction live. Um, it was oh, a I, lot love of fun that. I love yeah, that. I love that. It was so Got much it. fun to like, it, sometimes it, because as soon as their camera came up, they knew that then they were getting called. So they, it was just fun to see their reaction live and it would just be a surprise for everybody. Oh, I love that. Okay, Jenna, you may need to take that idea too. Um, I know, okay. and I'm getting like someone's kids getting really excited and like screaming yeah. for mom or dad, which is just really heartwarming yeah. to think about. Yeah, I know. Well, particularly when a lot of people are now working in the basement. So um, it's good to just get people out and, and get connected with their families and have them see why they, you know, love working at, at their company. OK, so um, let's see. With the last uh, minute, I am going to thank our audience. First of all, I'm going to thank you. You guys did a, a really meaningful job of being thoughtful about what's challenging, what's different. I'm going to add one of the things I said, what are the biggest mistakes you've made? And I'm just going to summarize that since it's, it's time to wrap. Uh, Megan said planning way ahead. Like you just can't have enough time. And Jenna said less is more. You know, whenever we go to plan anything, we're, we get excited, but less is, is more, particularly in the virtual world, since we can only keep people for a few hours and we have to guide them to do something every, every four minutes. So in wrapping, uh, thanks for your preparation. Thanks for your thoughtfulness and, and you know, contributing to people. I'm sure you're going to be getting a lot of LinkedIn so that they could ask you further questions. Uh, Jenna, I really want to thank Salesforce for sponsoring this event. To the audience, thank you for tuning in. For anyone that you want to share it with, the recording of today's event is going to be on YouTube shortly. Please share about this conversation on uh, social, hashtag ultimate sales kickoff. And if you would take a few minutes to do the survey, we would really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Have a great holiday season. Good luck with your sales kickoff. And it's a wrap. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Thanks.